But another way I've seen portfolios done is that they'll make it more like an informational story. Of course, they still have the illustrations and like the examples of how their design works, but um, their narrative storytelling is a little different. And also um, with your illustrations and your design process, you'll wanna make sure that you're describing and explaining what your audience is looking at as they're scrolling through. I hope that wasn't too fast, but does anybody have any questions before we move on to UCD's demo and activity? Maybe I should start looking at the chat. Nope. Okay. Doesn't seem like it. You do you ready? Yeah. I can go ahead and share. Sorry, hold on. No, no, no you're good. You're good. <laughs> Okay, so before we get into the activity, I'm going to share two examples of case studies. So I think you can see this. Um, so this is Dua's case study. And this is basically like more kind of typical structure of a case study. Um, so I chose it because of that. So, you know, everything put together. So we have the intro and then the role team members tools used. And as Nicole said, this is completely optional to put in but it is a good idea because it gives more of an idea of your case study. And then she goes in to talk about the problem and defining it and then her solution to this problem before she gets into her design process. And the design process can vary with each project, but you usually wanna start by defining it and kind of really summarizing what it is. And then she does that and then her user research so this is kind of like what differ differentiates mm -hmm. um, a case study from other things because uh, you know it has user research and you're basically trying to make your case study and your design based on this research. So you wanna show all your research, um, like your interviews, surveys, whatever you do, and then kind of say like what you got from it, your findings, and then Dua has a competitive analysis. So since she's making an app on mental health, um, she can have like a little analysis on like other apps that are out there. And then just kind of see like, oh, compared to this, like what else can I add and do things like that. And then she has kind of like a workshop to get more of her process. And then she shows her entire process with sketches. So. Your process doesn't have to be like very formal. It could just be sketches like over here. And then she does a user journey, which is just mapping everything like uh, for her in-app experience. And then in the end, she just shows her final designs and then has like little images that you can see the design in action. And yeah, that is Dua's. And then I wanted to show, oops another case study. So this is Angela's. And I want to show this one because it's very different from Dua's. Like, you notice there's a lot of words, a lot of paragraphs, there's a lot of storytelling. But Angela, she does shows more than tells. So she starts off with her intro, which is, you know, short and sweet, like a very nice uh, summary of what her case study is about. And then right off the bat, you see a lot of pictures just she does everything with her pictures and then defines her problem. And then more pictures basically for everything as well as her research. And she highlights like what she wants you to focus in on. So your eyes kind of go to the pain points. Oh, so these are the pain points and we'll go more into what pain points are later on in the activity. And then she has her user personas and then more of her research. And then she shows her first prototype, which is a video. Um, I can link this in the chat at the end if you wanna just go through everything more in depth because I know I'm going kind of fast. But one thing I will say about her case study is though you can definitely do something with 
a lot of pictures. Um, one thing I noticed is that it's kind of hard to see any uh, text in between because you see all these pictures of a process and everything. And then as you go on, you might kind of miss some text because it's so small between these big pictures. But otherwise, it's still a good case study, but I just keep that in mind if you go doing something along this path. And yeah. Um, so now I'll get into the activity. So how this will work is I'm gonna have two examples of small parts of a case study on the slide. And then before I get into like talking about it, I'll have a little poll just so you can see, um, put in like which one you think looks better and why. Um, it's completely anonymous and it's multiple choice. But if there is something else you wanna add, you can just go ahead and do so in the chat since Zoom doesn't let you put in your own answers. And then after that, I can show all the results and then we'll have a little more discussion on what the results were. So this is a case study on the intro part. I have actually have Angela's snippet right here. But basically, as I think Nicole talked about, the intro is something that you know describes your project and case study at the very beginning. And there's multiple ways to do this. So I chose one that's kind of like a paragraph, short and sweet, and then another one that has like the my role or timeline and also the overview kind of categorized together. And so now I'm gonna try and put up the poll. Um, okay, I think everyone should see it. Let me know if you can't or can but go ahead and just answer the poll based on which one you think looks what better and why. Um, I'll give everyone like one or two minutes to do so. And we'll give another 30 seconds. Okay, um, I will share the results. So it looks like the right case study won, um, but just know there's like no real winner for the case study. Cause I mean, it's completely up to you and your personal taste on what looks good. And it depends on your project on like how you want it to come across. So I'll just get into this. And so Angela's case study is definitely like more straightforward, I guess, but it's just like, uh, kind of like in paragraph form. So she, she's just telling it as, as it is. While the one on the right, it is more organized and really clear and telling you what the case study is about and like what their role is and everything like that. And it gives kind of a little more background. So, <clears throat> and I do think uh, it seems like visually appealing was like the most put in answer. So I do think the right one is more visually appealing just because of how organized it looks and it's just easy to look at. You know, you can just clearly find what you want to for this one. So let's get it. If anything, anyone wants to add anything else, you can just put in the chat or unmute yourself and tell me if there's something you want to, you know, add or why you chose what you chose. 
Um, okay, let me look up in chat. Okay, I guess not. Uh, so I guess we'll get started on the next part. Okay, so the next part is on defining the problem. So I can, you know, you can tell this left one is a lot more wordy, but sometimes it's a good thing because you really want to give background on what the problem is that you're trying to solve. So these are two examples of that. And you want to make sure when you're, that you're clear when you're defining the problem so that the reader knows what you're going to be solving and how you're going to be solving this problem. And I will launch the poll just to see everyone you know, which one you think looks better and give you another two minutes to go ahead and answer. Okay, I'll give another 10 seconds. Okay, um, let me share the results. So again, the right one won, but it looks like it was more kind of split down. So I definitely do think that uh, something to keep in mind is you want to have, you know, again, some form of a problem statement in your case study. And that's basically just the question you're answering. And it's often in like the form of how you might do something or how you're going to solve the problem. So how might we simplify the process of finding graduate assistantships? So something like that. And then this can be done either, you know, on the left or where it it kind of labels it really clearly or just the right where it straight up just has your problem statement. Um, and then the left, uh, left one does give a lot more detail, but I guess the right one is more visually appealing, especially because you don't, you really just, that's all you see. Like, you know that this is a problem and then you just understand straight away. You know, the left one, it kind of gives more background on it and highlights some key features of it which could be a good thing depending again on your project or your case study and on how you wanna do it. But sometimes it's just better to be more straightforward like on the right and just you know give it to it straight. So is there anything anyone else wants to add? Yeah, so right is more visually appealing but left is more detailed, yeah. And yeah, that's another thing, the contrast in the actual image of the black and white, uh, I think Neil said this, and the difference in the font sizes, yeah, it definitely does draw importance to like the different things. Yeah, one is more minimalistic, but 
it does depend on what you need and what your project is because you know every project is different and so every case study is different um anything else anyone wants to add okay um we'll get into the next one so this one is on research so you can either have like interviews or surveys like the interview on the left and a survey on the right. Um, so it's basically just a method of collecting data for a case study. And you know, as I said before, this is what differentiates a case study from anything else on your portfolio, since you're researching real users and to find their pain points and you're designing based on what you find. And it's up to you on how you wanna do this research and like how you wanna showcase it, but Usually you want to describe like how it is and like what's going on. And I will put up the next poll to see what everyone thinks. Okay, and I'll give two more minutes, just like before. We'll give everyone 30 more seconds. All right, I will go ahead and share the results. Um, so it looks like the left one, I guess one, um, but I will say both of these examples are definitely pretty wordy, but they do make it clear in different ways on like what they found and how each person conducted their research. Uh, the left one is definitely more straightforward and saying they basically interviewed th three groups of people and while the right one goes more into background detail on how many responses they got and how they grouped those responses together. Um, I also, the left one kind of categorizes each thing, like each finding they had. Well, the right one just tells it as it is in the second paragraph. And that at this point, um, you kind of might notice a theme between these examples where one kind of has like categories and you can, one has like categorizes each um, point while another just just tells it like a story, just writes it out. And that's another like thing about case studies. It really just depends on you on like what matches your port the rest of your portfolio and what kind of caters to your strengths. Like if writing is like your strong suit, then it might be a good idea just to write everything, like your whole process, even though it might be a little long. Meanwhile, if it's not, and you're just good at, you know, just showing data, then you can do it kind of like on the left where you just list everything out. But yeah, is there anything else anyone wants to say or put in the chat? Um, or anything, why they chose the left one or even the right one? Oh, oops.
right, I guess not. Uh, we'll get to the next part. So this next one is on pain points. And I know you might not know what those are, but it's basically just specific problems your target audience is facing. And it's usually shown in kind of like a more creative way, as you can see in these examples. But the purpose of including them in your case study is just so just shows like what you got out of your research and how you're going to solve these pain points in your project. Um, let me launch the next poll. And then I will share again after two minutes. So go ahead and put in your answers. I'll give about 30 more seconds. All right, I will go ahead and share the results. So like, it looks like the right one won. Um, so <clears throat> what I do wanna say is that both are good examples on showcasing pain points. So you can do it either way, like being very simple on the left one and just showing like what each user said, or you can put them in groups and have it more organized and have more detail like on the right. And again, depends on you and your projects. Sometimes it can be better just to tell it as it is, but other times it can be better to put in more detail. And that's like the one on the right. So, and it just depends on like what your project is on the rest of your portfolio, making it everything just matches and looks organized. And yeah, uh, is there anything else anyone wants to add on why they chose the left or right image? Uh, I'll look in the chat as well. Um, yeah, someone said right one is a lot more consistent and organized than the left. Yeah, and it's overall more visually appealing. Yeah, so that's something you want to keep in mind too. I mean, it doesn't just matter like all the contact. You want to make it visually appealing because as a designer, that is part of your job as well. Um, yeah, someone said flashcards seem more appealing than speech bubbles and it draws my attention more. Yeah, I honestly agree with that. It definitely, it's, it's just a lot more organized to have everything kind of grouped together. Whereas the left one, you just, you have to go through each one to figure out what it says. Um, yeah, and another thing is the left one has too much white space and the text is a bit small. So yeah, that's also one thing you wanna keep in mind, making sure, you know, just design features in general. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? All right, I guess we can do our next one. So this one is on user per personas and this is the last part of our activity. So this is can be optional to include in your case study since you can either have like pain points or a user persona, as you can notice, both of these have pain points included. 
but it definitely does make your process of your project easier and gives a solid idea on who the target audience of your project is. So I will go ahead and put in the poll and I have a feeling of which one is gonna win, but you know, you never know. <laughs> um, so go ahead and vote. I'll give another two minutes for everyone to get a chance. Another 30 seconds. All right, I'll go ahead and share the results. So as expected, the left one is one, but there is a reason why I chose the one on the right. Um, I know it's like the left one has a lot of detail and a lot of meters, which I'm not sure what they mean, but I wanted to show like on the right, you can keep it like very simple just to get the idea across that who your target audience is and that's why I wanted to put it, that one in. And one thing I do wanna note is the format of each of these user personas. Uh, both of them are, are organized by labeling things, like labeling each point. And the detail doesn't have to be formal language, like you can just list it everything out. And so that is just more easy to read and it just needs to give the main idea. So yeah, that is basically it as does anyone want to give in some input on why they chose what they chose? Uh, I'll look in the chat as well. <laughs> Oh yeah, why is it called pain? Okay, I don't know about that. I'm assuming it's a grammatical error, which I will say you wanna look out for those because things like this can happen. <laughs> but yeah. Any other opinions, thoughts? Yeah, a pain point is just problems you, uh, users run into and you're just defining like what it is and you're trying to solve that pain point. Or like find something that solves the pain point. Okay, if there's nothing, no other, oh, um, would it be better to have more info or less info? It honestly really depends. Like, as you saw, like for some of these, people thought that the one with less info was better. So it just depends on what you're trying to do, like your, what your per portfolio is like, and just if you're trying to really define everything. So for example, for the user persona, it can have a lot of information, but you don't really need it. You just need to get the main point across that, oh, this is their pain point, this is their goal and everything like that. Um, but as for the problem, I can go back to that slide. 
Um, yeah, so you can either do it with a lot of background, a lot of detail, or you can just tell the challenge as it is. And then just kind of like a little task of what you're gonna do at the bottom. And it's just, and you just put enough info to really get the point across of what you're trying to do. But yeah, are there any other questions? Um, do you have to write about yourself in, third per in the third person? Uh, you don't have to, it could just be, you can write yourself about it in the first person, like I did this, I did that, I found this. And it really, it just depends on you. It's literally just about getting the main point across basically. But yeah, I will hand it over to Nicole now. Yes, hello. <laughs> um, so our next thing is just if you guys have any questions for Yukti or I about just everything that we went over. Um, I did see something in the chat. I was gonna um, respond to the third person thing. Um, I would say that um, that would probably be useful if it's like a team. Um, and if you're referring to everybody like, oh, Talia found this, oh, you know, Yukti found this. Um, but if, if it's just you worked alone, then you don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say my piece on that. <laughs> but is there any other questions? You can unmute or put it in the chat, whatever works for you. How many case studies do you recommend having on your portfolio? Um, I think it depends on, I guess, also how many projects you've worked on. Um, I know like people in the beginning um, who are like just starting out, like even I'm just like starting to work out uh, or to work on projects. Um, I wouldn't have that many case studies to put on my, to put on my portfolio. Um, and I would say the quality of what's inside your case study outweighs like the quantity of how many case studies you actually have. Can you break down the st steps of a case study introduction and problem statement market research? Um, just real quick. So yeah, I would have like um, intro, uh, like, you know, explain what the problem is and like how you want to solve it with um, your product or your design. And then next step would be um, explain like what your role is in that. Um, uh, let me, hold on, let me go back. Um, and then your personas or your user testing, like um, whatever your research is, is like gonna take up the bulk of, of your case study and your design process, like your pictures of things, your, um, I know a lot of case studies have um, videos of actually how their designs like interact with the user. So like what people are clicking on and um, like what information they're asking the user to put in and things like that. Um, I can I can try to show an example of that. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, so I know Dua over here, she has these and she's so, showing the certain things that she um, added. Like these things are not an actual app, like she actually added them. Um, let me look for, um, Yukti went over this one I think earlier um, and she right off the bat has a video in the beginning um, and it looks a little, okay, the user is clicking here and clicking there. Oh, what would they like to talk about? And then, you know, um, so it's, it's whatever works with your case study, but yeah, having a video like this actually showing um, how it works, I think is really useful when it comes to this. Um, and then on what platform are these showcased on? Like a Wix site? Um, I think Dua's is a Wix site. I'm not sure, um, but portfolios can be made on a lot of different things. Um, Wix, um, Webflow, I think one of them is called. 
Um, Squarespace, I know a lot of people know about that one, um, but I, I don't know about that being for like good for portfolios, but any like website, like, sorry, <laughs> anything that makes a, a website or like a, a domain like should be, should be usable. Um, or if you're a programmer, you can code your own domain. <laughs> But that's a lot more work. And if you're just a designer, it's not worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, of course. Was that good, Masuma, the breakdown? Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> Anybody else? You, do, you, do you have anything to add? Did I miss anything? No, I think you hit everything. Lit. <laughs> Perfect. Anybody else? Um, I could add for the how many case studies do you recommend having? If you want like a certain amount, I'd say at least one, like maximum three. But really having a lot of case studies doesn't, you know, help you that much because it's just describing like how you work through like research and using that research for a user. So like one, two examples and showing those examples to a future employer is like, should, be, should be good enough. Yeah, especially like in the introductory stages. Cause I know um, one of the people that we showed Angela, she had a lot of case studies, but also that's not the only thing that your portfolio is gonna have in it. You know, it's gonna have like an about page about you. It's going to have, you know, other things that are gonna describe, you know, it's like an online resume basically, so. Um, but yeah, case studies are, are definitely good to have, but you don't need too many, definitely. <laughs> Just to go over what Yukti said. Um, okay, let me find the slide. So um, last thing I wanted to mention was um, just to make sure to check out um, our past workshop on portfolios, um, which is on our YouTube. And um, I think Yukti, Yukti is going to paste them into the chat. Um, they're really, really helpful. Um, Simran and um, Nisha did a really good shot, job um, like showing their portfolios and, and really describing what goes into it and, and everything. So really cool. I would check it out. Um, and then the last thing is just thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming. I know midterms are coming up very soon for people. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck to us all. <laughs>